Howdy. I'm Joseph Shimizu, sales support engineer from Professional Technologies at Sony. This is our second set of our tech tip series, and we got a lot of feedback the first time out, and one question we got asked to answer more was to get into gamma and gamut. So we're going to do that, and this is our part one of a two-part series that's going to deal with gamma and gamut, and we're going to start with gamut. So don't let the names throw you off. These are two very different components of a video image, and they're both super important. Understanding them fully and is the way to get those great looking pictures you want versus fighting and almost getting them. Here, I have a diagram of what is referred to as a standard observer. This is a averaged mathematical studied idea of how we all generally see. This demonstrates the range of colors an average theoretical person could, could take in. And it's just an example. So what you see here could be more or less of what is actually shown. Everybody's eyes are actually different. The important thing is that this model is a general range of what we can see and, very importantly, the range of colors our technology can reproduce. So it's two sides. And here I have a diagram of your eye, and it's a beautifully complicated device. The area here is your retina. And this includes an area that has sensors which convert the incoming light into the sensations we feel as sight. The eye makes use of two biological sensors to do this. Rods are the first ones, and they're at the outer edges of our retina, and are used for sight in dark lighting. They're really the black and white side of the eye. Closer to the center are our cones, which are used to sense what we interpret as color, and there are three different kinds of those that respond to red, green, and blue. For today, we're going to talk about color, and in video, that color is known as a gamut. Now, if you look back at the chart, you'll see that it's an odd shape, but it also has red, green, and blue areas marked out. To the center of the chart, you'll see white. And this is, <laughs> let me just say it, there is no brightness depicted here, just color. So I know that sounds weird and feels weird, but just understand that this is a mathematical chart. This is The color there is just because if we're talking about it, we have to show it to you, but the color here is not to be taken crazy seriously. The data points are. And this white point is what we normally would refer to as D65. So you'll see that in monitor as a setting, and that'll control your general white bias. If you look a little bit closer, you'll see this line. This line is called the black body. And what it does is it shows the range of white, from blackest black to whitest white. And we'll talk more about this in the gamma side of the series. Now, as you move away from the line, you'll start to get at the sense, you'll, it, if you're looking at it, you'll see deeper into the colors, you'll get richer. Your color gamut is the maximum distance on this chart from white to a fully saturated color. And remember, that's really done by math, not by eye. So how do you do it? You're gonna, if you look closer, you'll see that the chart has numbers on it. We have an X and a Y axis. So we'll be using these two numbers, the X and a Y, to define the, where the maximum gamut is. And that's actually what you would use if you were take, doing this via math. So why do we care? Well, as you work with color, you'll be introduced to specific standards that use these numbers. And that's how everyone, we agree as a group, will talk about colors when we're trying to do professional work. These standards are defined by titles that you most likely have heard thrown around. And you've definitely heard them in the previous set of our series. Terms like 709. And what we're talking about when I say 709 is that it is an actual published standard for HDTV. Its formal name is ITU-RBT709. And the extra jargon in there is just to tell you, you know, who made it, where it's from, whether it's a recommendation or a standard. You can drill into that on their website to get the full data on that. But what it really describes is the boundary of colors, the maximum amount of crayons, and the type of crayons we can use for HD work. So when we talk about using 709, we normally are working on a project that will be shot and posted within this broadcast limitation. By keeping within these limits, we're guaranteed to be compliant when it goes to air. The red that we saw on the monitor is the red that we recorded on the camera, it's the red they saw in the edit, and it's the red that went out to air. 
Now, depending on what the content is destined to be shown on or as, there are different standards that may be required. So for instance, with digital cinema, they use a larger gamut defined by uh, its full name is SEMPTI RP431. And this is a wider gamut and is commonly referred to as P3. Now, you may also have heard about another gamut called 2020, and this is newer and is even wider or more color, more crayons, and encompasses way, way more than P3 or 709, and is common to see paired up with HDR work or when you see UHD or 4K streaming. Sony monitors have settings for these standards and a bunch of others. And you can set your monitor to show up uh, to show either the gamut you want we have uh, features in monitors that will actually flash on screen colors that are not within a given standard if you set it up like that. And it's a useful tool if you're doing very, very narrow color work. And you know what? just know that these are all talking about standard gamuts. Um, and again, I recommend you go to the websites of the standards organizations that publish these and you can really drill into their nitty gritty data. But there are also non-standard gamuts available too, and there are advantages for using them. If you look through the camera menus of any modern camera you'll see at the professional level these days, you'll see non-standard gamuts. They won't have the ITU or the R thing next to them. And in a Sony camera, in the Sony world, you'll see S gamut. And in our digital cinema cameras, you'll either see S gamut or something called S gamut dot cine. And these don't follow the standards like ITU R709 would, but they're there for a reason. And for a camera, it's not that difficult to depict the visible spectrum that we can see. It sees actually a lot more. And if we were to just say, ah, you know what, most of the world is 709, we're going to just do 709, you would never have the option of having these extra colors that maybe you want to go to digital cinema, maybe you want to do HDR, maybe you're doing a, a private art project and you really want to be able to play with the colors dramatically. When we use something like S Gamut, that gives you that ability later. And it's just an idea of giving you as many options as you can have when you're doing your post. So keep in mind, once your content leaves the post-production process, it has to meet one of these standards unless you're in your own MoMA environment. And this is really why it's so important to know what a gamut is and its qualities, its technical qualities. Now the only other way that you can have maximum data for dealing with color is when you record RAW. And if you record RAW, that is all the crayons a given camera can make. And it'll give you the most latitude for when you're working in post. So, this is a definition of what a gamma, gamut is, how it works in the Sony world, and what the standards are. Thanks for watching this video. Please join us in part two as we'll be talking about gamma. Thanks for watching. See you next time.